Okay, guys, so here we are back uh, for another stirring AP chemistry lecture. We've got to start off with jokes. So, what do you call a boy with one foot in the door? What do you call a boy with one foot in the door? Just in. Just in. Just in. And what do you call a policeman who never gets out of bed? An undercover cop. So hopefully that'll get you through the weekend. Okay, guys, we're going to continue in Chapter 4 right where we left off. Remember, Monday, Tuesday, your hydrate lab is due. Show your work. Uh, watch your sig figs. Watch your units. The quiz on Chapter 3 is due Wednesday, Thursday. We're done with Chapter 3. We're now moving into Chapter 4. And so this time will be important to get a setup on class on Monday. I think to get set up where we can pre-lab a lab, we'll do on Wednesday, Thursday of next week. So back to where we were. Okay, so where we left off, we were actually <clears throat> going back. We were actually on this page here, and we were talking about strong electrolytes, weak electrolytes, non-electrolytes. So uh, here now... Uh, the next topic, and this is a review from first year chem molarity. This is actually on the uh, the formula sheet. And I'll just real quick show you this. So if you if you guys go back to the formula sheet, and if you look on the back, right here, it's got n is equal to m over m well that big m is molarity and that is and so that that is on the formula sheet so that is definitely something that they're going to expect us to use and we will use it a lot uh in our <clears throat> in our classes we will use molarity gosh i'm thinking maybe i'm wrong here that molarity equation is definitely on here Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's not on here, but it's one we're going to use so often that you guys are going to get. No, it is. I'm sorry. It's I, I would refer to the wrong one. It's right here where it says molarity is equal to moles of solute per liter of solution. So, so all that being said is they are definitely going to expect us to use it, and we'll use this a lot. This will be one of, one of the big ones that we're going to use is the molarity uh, equation. So um, molarity is moles of solute per liter of solution. I'm going to do a problem here in a second, and I always set it up and get it into a triangle, if that's helpful to you. And you really don't. In AP Chem, you probably don't need to. Molarity is indicated with a capital M. And I always make the point in first-year chem, there's a difference between moles. The moles, Avogadro's number, it's with a chemist uh, tool to count where molarity is a way to measure concentration, how much solute in a solution. Okay, so here's a kind of question you could be asked. And this, uh, this instrument here we actually have in the back, a volumetric flask with a, a line on the top. And that way you can add right a, whatever, in this case, we want uh, 1.5 liters. So the question is, how would you prepare? And in AP Chem, there's a lot of labs where in first year chem, I was always gave you the solution or Mr. Conyers or Mr. Hodas, where in our class, sometimes you're going to make the solution. So let's do this problem. And again, it's one that you guys <clears throat> did in first year chem. So, and again, you, you probably don't need it simplified this much, but if molarity is equal to moles per liter, if you put this in the form of a triangle, moles on top, molarity in liters on the bottom, and then converting moles, because a lot of times they'll give us grams. So, so if that's helpful to you, and if you want to write that on the formula sheet, you can. Um, you certainly, probably, a lot of you don't need it, but right there. But if you want to, you can. So I'm going to use that in this problem. We're, how would you prepare? And so that means what I really need is I need to figure out how many grams am I going to have to dissolve in these um, 
1.50 liters. So I'm going to solve for moles, moles by taking molarity times liters. If you're asked to prepare something, you need to know, okay, I know the volume I need, but the question is what, how much do I need to put in there? What, what mass? So I'm going to take the uh, molarity, which is 0 0.192. And the liters, and it's got to be liters here. It's got to be liters, 1.50 liters, which it was in this problem. But if they gave us milliliters, we would have to get that. <clears throat> we'd have to get the milliliters into liters. So it's 0.288 moles. But our balances, they don't measure in moles. They measure in grams. So what we need to do then is we need to convert to grams. So that's 11.5 grams. Okay, so the question, the question was, how would you prepare this solution? Well, what would you would do is you would measure out 11.5 grams of sodium hydroxide. And then you would put it in water and you would dilute the water up to 1.5 zero liters. So it would look like this. Okay, so there was our question. And so what we would do is we would add 11.5 grams of NaOH to enough water to make 1.50 liters of solution. And that way we will have done what we were asked to do. <clears throat> and then the question is, 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 is this solution really 0.12 molarity NaOH? Well, this goes back to something that we talked about in the last lesson, which was this is strong electrolytes, which are strong acids, strong bases, and soluble salts. They dissociate completely. Well, in this case, this is NaOH, strong base, NaOH and strong base, which means it's going to dissociate completely. So it's going to dissociate into Na plus OH. So we made this to be 0.192 molarity because this is a strong, a strong base, which means it completely dissociates. Really, what we have is not 0.192 molarity NaOH. We have 0.192 molarity sodium and 0.192 molarity hydroxide. So really to technically answer that question, that would be what we have there. Okay, so back to the notes. So molarity, definitely a big, important thing in our class. So then the question there, is this solution really 0.192 molarity NaOH? No, it's really 0.192 molarity Na and 0.192 molarity OH. Okay, so determine the concentration of each ion in a 0.15 molar NH4 three PO4 solution and determine the concentration of each ion and then in H2 C2O4. Okay, so to do this goes back to remembering the solubility rules. Okay, and ammonium phosphate, there were four, there were four ions that whenever you saw them, they dissociated completely in the salt. And that's and this is one of them. So if it's NH43PO4, because this is one of those, it's a salt, it's an ionic compound, so it's got a cation and an anion, usually a metal and a non-metal. It's got sodium, potassium, ammonium, which this does or nitrate, it's going to completely dissociate. So it's going to break down like this. And if we are told that this is 1.5 molarity of this, because it's a 1 to 3 ratio, it would be 4.5 molarity of this. And 1 to 1, it would be 1.5 of this. So the question, determine the concentration of each ion. So this would be 4.5 molar uh, in ammonium and 1.5 molar in phosphate. Now the second one, H2C2O4, this is called oxalic acid. In this case, 
it is not one of the strong acids. So it does not dissociate completely. And so in terms of in terms of how many ions would this produce, the answer is it would be very few. And there wouldn't really be a number. So you would say no ions are very, very small, negligible amount of ions in, in that. Okay, so going back and recognizing um, soluble salts, strong <clears throat> strong strong electrolyte, soluble salts, strong acid, strong base. Okay, now now this question. Okay, so blood serum is approximately 0.14 molar NaCl. What volume of blood contains one milligram? of NaCl. Okay, so we're going to go back here and again, uh, probably a problem. Hopefully that is <clears throat> not too bad for you guys. So again, you don't probably need to use the triangle, but you can. So with the question here, what we're trying to find is the volume. It says, says um, what volume? So volume is going to be liters. If I cover up volume, it's moles over molarity. And it says that the molarity is 0.14. But the moles need to be determined. And we are told that it is 1 milligram. So I'm going to have to get the, the milligrams into grams. And uh, it says that it is NaCl, so then I would have 58.5 grams for every one mole. So I'm going to take 1 divided by 1,000 divided by 58.5, which is 1.7 times 10 to the negative 5 moles. So what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm trying to figure out what is going to go on top here. So what goes on top then is 1.7 times 10 to the negative 5 moles. So conversion with plug and chug. So 1.7 times 10 to the negative 5 divided by 0.14 gives me 1.2 times 10 to the negative 4. And the unit on that would be liters. Okay, so again. Just a, make sure you guys can see that. So, again, it's a molarity problem. It's a plug and chug problem. Okay, so back to the notes. And back in now to some equation writing. Okay, so we've done this slide now. Okay, so now... Dilutions. I'm sorry. Before equations, dilutions. This is a this is a formula that is not on the formula sheet, but it's an equation we'll use a bunch. M1 v1, M2 v2. Kind of makes me think a little bit of the gas laws, which are a totally different topic, but you go through them in the same way. And a stock solution, a concentrated solution used to dilute and make a dilute solution. And so when we when I make a solution for first year chemistry students and sometimes for AP chem students is there's a stock solution we have and we just dilute it because we want it, don't want it to be super concentrated. Okay, so here's, here's an example. Problem, you have 1.5 liters of a 0.1 molar sulfuric acid are needed. You have to make 18.3 molar. You know, that's what you have. How would you make this solution? Okay, so this is how we would do a dilution. <clears throat> So dilution is M1, V1, M2, V2. So in this problem that we just had, and it doesn't really matter what the ones and the twos are, as long as you've got the right molarity with the right volume. So if I'm going to say M1 is 0 0.10, and it doesn't matter as long as it doesn't matter if it's M1 or M2, but I have to have the volume with it, which is 1.5. The uh, M2 is 18.3, so this is the way it comes to 
chemistry teachers, and so the volume is x. So if I solve for x here, what I have is 1 times 1.5 by 18.3 gives me 0 0.00819. Zero C sig figs, 2, so 0 0.0082. 082. And because this was in liters, this would be liters. And if you leave it like that, that works in terms of just the calculation. Probably most people would call it 8.2 milliliters. So the way you would prepare this then, the safe way to prepare this, is you would take almost 1.5 liters of, of water. And then you would edit the 8.2 mils of the concentrated acid and then finally top it off at 1.5. So that would be the safe way to go about <clears throat> making this solution. Can okay, I think I say that here in the notes? Yes, I did. So what you would do then is you would take, again, so you would take almost 1.5 liters of water, not quite. Then you would add the 8.2 mils of the sulfuric acid, the concentrated, and then finally you top it off at 1.5 liters, a little bit like the, the diagram shows. Okay, here's a good one to read and to kind of see working through this problem. So 15 mils of KNO3, and this is again, and, I, and I'm telling you guys, in doing these problems, I truly have to work them kind of, I, I sometimes have to diagram that out. So 15 mils of KNO3 was diluted to 125 mils, and 25 mils of this was diluted to 1,000, and it's kind of, it's a lot. And so, again, welcome to AP Chem. Okay, so... I am just going to kind of just do a diagram here of just how this, what's going on here. So, okay, so what it says is that I've got 150 mils of KNO3 was diluted to 125 mils. So I've got 125 mils initially had 15. Okay, then I took out of this 25 mils. Uh, and then this was diluted up to 1,000. I don't know if that helps you, but it kind of helps me. The question is, what was the, the final concentration of this? So this was the final molarity. This is 0 0.00383. And I want to know, what was the molarity of this? That's what I'm trying to find. Okay, so I'm going to use dilution, the uh, dilution equation here. So I've got M1, V1, M2, V2. I'm going to kind of start at the end, and I'm going to work my way back. So I know that the molarity is 0 0.00383, and the volume was 1,000 mils. And the molarity of this, I didn't know, but the volume that I added to this was the 100 or was the, uh, was the 25 mils. So what I did is I took the 25 mils of this, I didn't know its concentration, I diluted it to 1,000, and there was the concentration. This is not going to be my final answer, but then if I do the math, 00383 times 1,000 divided by 25 is 0.1532 molarity. So that's the molarity uh, here. But I need to do another dilution because I want to know the molarity of this. So M1, V1, M2, V2. So I know the molarity is 0.1532. And I knew the volume of this was 125 mils. That's what this was. The molarity is x, so that's what I'm trying to find. 
and I had 15 mils in it. So if I solve for X, what I get is 1.284. Again, that's an AP chemistry problem. That's a pretty good problem. And uh, definitely it's good to, to try a problem like that on your uh, on your own so dilution so dilutions molarity definitely big things in our class okay i want to just do one more slide and we will call it a weekend and pick back up here on monday tuesday okay and you can notice here's some problems and you guys have a lot of things to be doing now you know, you can work on the quiz chapter three, the lab, the problems from chapter four now. And so 18, 19, 23, 24, A, and 25. Okay, so this kind of leads us into the next point, and this will be a good stop off. But precipitation or double, play, double replacement reaction. And these we worked on pretty extensively in first year chem. This is where we did the outers and the inners. Okay, and so we always had we always had uh, two aqueous compounds on the left, and then on the right they recombined, and so they did the outers and the inners. And you can see that A combines with Y, the outers, and then X combines with B, the inners. Okay, and then the question here: What will happen? The first question: When BaNO three two solid is added to K two SO four solid, and the answer there is nothing. The first one, nothing, because solids, the, the ions are not free to move around, so they're stuck in place, so they just stay there. So in the first case, nothing happens. But the second one, you can kind of see in the picture here, and this will be a good place for us to start again next week in reviewing writing complete ionic uh, or molecular complete ionic and anionic equations. But what will happen there? is we'll get a reaction and we'll write that out next week. So that is a good place to stop. Guys, have a good weekend. Keep working on your AP Chem. Uh, you know, it's a grind and I know it's a challenge even when we're doing review, but keep, keep working. If you have questions, ask. Guys, have a good weekend. Keep working hard. Bye.